they're also going into the private market uh, space as well because uh, they want growth as well. So they're either doing that organically or actually these large asset managers, which used to be traditionally retail world, are now acquiring all ten of asset managers because it's much quicker rather than growing the team organically. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome in the studio Nick Tabone and Arnaud Bon, who are both partners at Deloitte. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you. We are here Thank to you. talk about private equity today. And I will start by asking you, which are the main trends right now in Luxembourg in private equity? I think what, what, one of the main trends that we have been seeing for a few years now is uh, this semi-liquid type of product, uh, which have started in the US a few years ago, which has reached Europe uh, in the meantime. And uh, with all game of tapping into a new universe of investors, uh, high net worth individuals, mass affluence, with products which are not the typical closed ended product, uh, start date and end date and no liquidity in the meantime, but with uh, liquidity or a certain level of liquidity for investors. So just to explain for people who are not familiar, normally you've got two main categories. You've got liquid funds like USIT. You can basically buy and sell almost at any time. An illiquid fund, that's really what you guys do at, uh, in private equity, where normally you commit money, the money is called in, and you have to wait years, normally a few years, until you get it back. Semi-liquid means it's private equity, but maybe the ticket is lower, and I can buy and sell sometimes, or what are the conditions? That's correct. You, you, you got a number of conditions. Generally, you have quarterly type of liquidity, and actually the portfolios are composed of liquid assets and illiquid assets with a strong uh, preponderance of illiquid private equity or typical uh, illiquid assets, 80% or so. Uh, but investors can come in and out on a quarterly basis okay. when things are going well, uh, unless there are some illiquidity events, in which case the, the fund is, can be temporarily closed. Yeah, and this goes in the same move where we see the tickets go lower. Absolutely. I think a few years ago, you, you needed to be uh, an institutional investor with a minimum tickets of what? A few million. A few million. <laughs> and now with this semi-liquid? Minimum tickets are around 50, 100,000 euros. Okay, uh, so it's much, much lower. Yeah. Perfect. Do you see other uh, trends, uh, Nick, in, uh, in private equity? Yeah, sure. You, so you mentioned the usage world before. Um, as you know that we had, I mean, if we take an example of the largest uh, usage fund manager, BlackRock, they're also going into the private market uh, space as well because uh, they want growth as well. So they're either doing that organically or actually these large asset managers, which used to be traditionally retail world, are now acquiring all ten of asset managers because it's much quicker rather than growing the team organically. So this would be really a convergence from people who used to do liquid funds only going into illiquid just to maximize the uh, I would say the performance, uh, I imagine. Correct. Or uh, traditionally increase their assets under management. So to remain uh, at the top of the league table, if you're looking at AUM uh, alone as a, as a KPI. And I guess that's a very good news for Luxembourg because that draws in private equity players, family office. Mm -hmm. I mean, a whole range of professionals who used to work separately now start working in private equity. It is very good because the tradition Luxembourg has been very well known serve the use its uh, mm -hmm. industry so the managers are already here so if they're just changing their strategy to allocate that to the different strategies which is one of which being the private equity one uh, the ecosystem is here and the players are here so mm -hmm. it is beneficial definitely for the Luxembourg market. Yeah, we, we have the whole ecosystem here but of course the, the last two, two three years we've seen that the interest rate have been higher and we know that normally uh, this is uh, good for uh, liquid funds because mm -hmm. you get more or less uh, high uh, return quite fast. Uh, how is this impacting uh, private equity professionals? Are they looking at cost more? Yeah, I think the, the, the two previous trends we, we mentioned are basically looking at gross, gross of AUM, gross at re of revenues for managers. But there is a strong trend as well looking at the cost base uh, of course. Uh, across the board. Um, alternative managers have come to realize that uh, they did not historically pay a lot of attention to their cost base. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a lot of room for, for, for improvement that goes through more use of technologies, more, I mean, linear processes that goes through different sourcing models, outsourcing, co-sourcing. 
Those are all topics that we find today as being particularly um, on top of the agenda of those uh, fund managers, mm -hmm. um, especially um, with a number of fund managers. If you look at the US market, they were probably early adopters of technology for middle, front, and back office type of activities 10, 15 years ago. We're arriving, or a number of them are arriving at the end of a maturity cycle to a certain extent with a big question, which is what do we do next? Do we um, reinvest into technology uh, because technology has evolved? Do we try to find external partners to do that? And there is more and more appetite to actually outsource uh, a certain number of activities relying on the technology investment made by, I mean, service providers and, uh, and technology partners. Uh, basically. And obviously, because the deal making slowed down over the last two, three years, asset managers start looking inwards as well to their own operations. Yeah, more time. Yeah, and we, we need to remember that we, we've been through many years of extremely low mm -hmm. interest rate. And this took, uh, if we talk just about the liquid funds, I think we went from 2 trillion to 5.9 trillion in uh, maybe 10 or 12 years. And of course, during that period, as you said, people didn't really look at the cost because the returns were so high anyway. So it's a, we could say a consolidation or a maturity phase. So it, it, it is maturing. There is also a consolidation, mm -hmm. uh, part of which between traditional and alternative, as Nick was mentioning, mm -hmm. there is also consolidation within the alternative space. You see uh, alternative players acquiring for geographical diversification, strategy diversification, and actually the large players becoming larger and larger, mm -hmm. and concentration, the large players raising more and more money, actually. Of course. So maybe to another topic, which is uh, critical, I think, right now for, for Luxembourg, it's about this attractiveness and the competitiveness of Luxembourg in private equity. How do you think Luxembourg can uh, maintain those two essential factors? I think, Jerome, I'll be short, because I think there are two key priorities that we should, uh, that Luxembourg should do, I think, and should offer to the, to the industry uh, is basically offering fiscal certainty. I think asset managers want to know that um, once they launch a product, they are pretty certain as the fiscal outcome of when those investments are, are ripe for, for exit. Uh, and they also want, uh, they are comfortable with regulation, not over regulation, but more of a pragmatic regulation. And mm -hmm. I think that is something key, uh, which we also observe in our in neighboring jurisdictions. So I think it's it's time for Luxembourg to to come to that pragmatic regulation kind of affairs. And in terms of the t fiscal certainty, I think Luxembourg is quite good for that. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the regulation, I also think that we are in the lead when it comes to transposing efficiently those regulations. So again, this should be normally assets uh, for Luxembourg. Yes. Uh, Maybe if we go to, to the opportunities that you identify, Arno, uh, going forward, where can we find some growth in the coming months and years? In fact, the, 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 there are two growth drivers probably. One which is, uh, I mean, bringing more PE players and more product to Luxembourg. And I think for this, the toolbox in Luxembourg is working quite well, is very well recognized uh, globally. There is always improvement to be made, but overall uh, it has proven to be very successful. And actually, if you looked or I recall, trying to pitch to alternative fund managers 12, 15 years ago to set up their funds in Luxembourg. They were literally losing at you. And now, I mean, all the large ones. Where is ones, Luxembourg? Where is Luxembourg? <laughs> and, why, and why would we do that? Uh, if you look at the large ones nowadays, they are all in Luxembourg with funds in Luxembourg. So they, 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 there is this element, but we can, of course, bring um, second, third, fourth tier. Uh, which are, I mean, we, which can be interested in raising funds in Europe and using the Lux Hub to do uh, to do that. The second thing, uh, which is more, um, I mean, local market or local economy um, driven to a certain extent, is uh, the nature of the work uh, that we uh, that we observe in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. I think a few years ago it was essentially uh, back office type of activities. Um, what we have seen with a number of fund managers is actually this back office evolving into middle office type of activities with some players having very substantial presence here in Luxembourg with fund management activity, real middle office. Mm -hmm. um, some of the professionals that were here years ago actually evolved as well uh, in their career. But now we have a pool of resources and talents that we didn't have in this sector uh, before, uh, basically. And that is growth, uh, potentially, that is more added value uh, as well to the economy uh, overall. So that, that's certainly a, a growth driver as well. Okay, so shifting from back office to middle, maybe one day 
to front. But of course, to do that, we need to attract people. We need to train them and raise the level. Maybe another idea for a last opportunity? Sure. And before I go to that, I think just to conclude on what uh, Arnaud mentioned, I think the Luxembourg Private Equity Association is doing a great job to manage to uh, build and promote the ecosystem uh, in Luxembourg around the back to middle office, as we, as we call it. But one strange thing as well is with the growth of the uh, private equity funds being launched out of Luxembourg, it is also strange that the uh, Luxembourg pension fund does not allocate any of its um, uh, pool of capital to any private equity uh, funds as well. because Just like I, the US does. Just like the US does and many other neighboring geographies because at the end of the day, the, uh, the alignment in terms of what receipts you need and what capital uh, calls you make or do um, is there. And that, that is why, because at the end of the day, a pension fund is a long-term investment, which is in line and in sync with the private equity fund, which is also long-term. Yeah, in so nature. I'm sure you appreciated the new budget 2025, which mm -hmm. was presented this week by Gilles Roth, where we could clearly see that uh, from 2028, pensions are not financed anymore. And of course, it's uh, almost uh, so obvious that you've got the ecosystem of professionals who could do that properly, there's surely here a massive opportunity. Well, gentlemen, yes. thank you very much for thank your time. You. Thank Pleasure. you, Rome.